welcome back to The Mystery is Solved and our investigation of the Will County Rectangle. Over the years, solving all of these mysteries takes a lot of legwork, if you know what I mean. Ace reporter Dizzy Simon, our Will County correspondent, has legged it from one side of the county to the other and back. Our star reporter, Vertigo, Vertigo Jones, has That's been around the world a few times herself. And we got friends up in the North Woods who have proved to be invaluable in our quest for the truth. So, let's tackle the biggest mystery first. It was a bright and sunny December afternoon in 1945 when five TBM Avengers took off from the Fort Lauderdale Naval Air Station, never to return. There has been much speculation about their fate. Did they just get lost and run out of gas? Or did they get sucked into the backlash of a spatio-temporal vortex, as some have suggested? If so, did they keep Ducking in and out of space and time, still trying to find their way home? Well, we stumbled onto the rascals that claim to have created that vortex. Christopher Columbus, Marco Polo, and Ponce de Leon were all nice Italian guys and great adventurers and all well-known explorers of North America. None of them had come nearly as far as these two fellas. We have located the actual pilots of the craft alleged to have crashed near Roswell, New Mexico in 1947. Tonight, for the first time, on any television screen, on any planet, in any universe, we bring you the story of those galactical rascals. They're coming to you live from their remote wilderness studio in northern Ontario. R220, how are things going up there in the Great White North? Well, dude, I gotta tell you, things are looking up. We got our studio going on up here. We got our shows broadcasting up on satellite now starting to get some viewers. Even you guys saw some of our shows. And we snagged a gig parking cars to get some extra cash. All this stuff is pretty expensive, you know. And we still got repairs to do on our ship. So, uh, R220, uh, I'm gonna call you R2 for short. I hear your original trip here had a kinda rough ending. You want to tell us about it? Well, we packed our bags, got all of our pets on board, and headed your way. The Milky Way. Yeah, it took us about two of your days to get here. By your calendar, it was 1945. December 5th, I remember. Yeah, WD-40 was driving when we come out of the wormhole. It's over your Atlantic Ocean about 1700 local time. And he got a bit sloppy when he disconnected the warp core. Disconnected the warp core! Coming out of hyperspace caused a really intense spatio-temporal vortex. Didn't last long, but there was five of your air vehicles right there in the way. TBM Avengers. Found out later it was Charlie Taylor and the guys from Flight 19. Yeah, we've been running into them a lot over the years. Finally figured out their radio frequency and been talking to them every now and then. They're still stuck in the backlash of that vortex. The backlash of the vortex! And every now and then, they pop back into real time. But not for very long. They still don't know where they are. But they'll get home eventually. So... You're admitting that you and WD-40 caused the disappearance of Flight 19? Hey, 
all we did was give you all that video we shot of Charlie and the guys out there that day. And right now, I ain't admitting nothing. You told me NCIS now reopened the case file and they're starting to ask questions about it. Uh, yeah, uh, they was down talking to Dizzy Simon and Vertigo Jones a while back. But they invoked their galactical right not to reveal their sources. And they didn't tell them nothing. I hope not. We got too much to do. Can't be bothered running away from NCIS all the time. And will you quit using that Google Earth thing? It's gonna take them right to us. Hey, Dick, listen. I'm getting kind of hungry here. Me and WD-40 are going to call up Duke's Catering and get some lunch for us and the girls. I know you want to hear about Roswell and the Will County Rectangle and that thing up at O'Hare. Can we do all that later? Okay, but did WD-40 get a ticket for driving under galactical intoxication? You know, a Dougie? Nah, they'll yell at him when we get home. But that's about it. Hey, listen, we're gonna go get some poutine and a couple of labats now, okay? Okay. You guys have a nice lunch, and we'll catch up to you in a while. <laughs> Boy, I wasn't gonna ask him what was for lunch. That's one thing I probably don't want to know. And now... We're going to take you to Dizzy Simon in her beautiful new studio in downtown Joliet. It's right on the river where it seems something unusual has been swimming around. Well, she's all over that mystery. You got a real nice uh, set there, Diz. Thank you very much, Dick. I know. Isn't it gorgeous? I decorated myself. Hey, but you know what? Before we get into the mystery swimmer, I want you to know that NCIS was down here snooping around again just yesterday. He came in bursting onto the set when we're rehearsing our new Wild Will County show. Well, luckily, we had the camera rolling, and this time I made sure to find out just why Special Agent... John Padre seems to be so fascinated with our friends up north. So, Agent Padre. That's Special Agent Padre. Special Agent Padre, I only have two questions for you. First of all, where's Gibbs? He's so cute. And second, why do you insist on harassing us? Well, Diz. That's Dizzy to you. Okay, Dizzy. First of all, Agent Special Agent Gibbs is back down in Mexico. Not that's any of your business. And secondly, the NCIS mission is to investigate and defeat criminal, terrorist, and foreign intelligence threats to the United States Navy and Marine Corps, wherever they may operate, ashore or afloat. And that means what? It means we believe the illegal aliens in question have something to do with the disappearance of Flight 19, which is a criminal act, and the loss of five Navy bombers and 14 brave naval aviators. Mm. Well, we already told you we don't know nothing, and besides that, even if we did, we have an obligation to protect our sources. Well, just so you know, NCIS is not going to give up on this. Uh, well, okay, whatever, but if you come back, can you do me a favor and bring Agent Gibbs? He's so cute. Boy, that guy was a real peach. What's his title? The Rear Admiral? Yeah, Dick, I totally agree. I really hope that's the last we see of him for a while. Okay, so now back to our mysterious swimmer. While I was investigating some of Will County's strange sightings, I stumbled across a very interesting tidbit of information. While doing some research at the Joliet Public Library, I met an interesting woman named Greta, who unfortunately didn't want to be on camera. This Joliet resident has lived here all her life. In fact, her grandfather, Hans, was one of the men that built the Brandon Locks. Greta's father, Klaus, had in his possession an old photo of the Brandon Locks taken by his father, Hans, and in this photo was a very interesting creature that Greta lovingly named Brandy. Now, obviously, I wasn't able to speak with the person that took that photo. But, 
I dug a little deeper and I found a man who has a photo and a story of his own to tell. He happens to live on a houseboat docked at the Will County Marina right next to the Brandon Locks. Hi, this is Dizzy Simon and I'm at the Will County Marina right in front of the Bu Brandon Locks. I'm here with Grady Graves, the man that sent the photo that started this entire investigation. Grady, tell me a little something about yourself. My name is Grady Graves. I'm a local grave digger and I work for the cemetery that's just beyond your camera shot out there, ma'am. Every day I'm here for lunch. I sit here for lunch and I have a cold one. One day I'm sitting here having my cold one and I hear a rustling in the water and I look out and this big head comes out. Looks to the left, looks to the right, and these eyes stare at me. He makes another noise. It's like a gurgling noise. And, a, and then he goes down in the water. Now before he got down in the water, I don't have a cell phone. I carry a Polaroid on me. And I grabbed that Polaroid and I took a shot. And I'm holding on that Polaroid. You know, when it comes out, you're hoping it develops. Sure enough, that's the, that's the shot I sent to you. What did you think? You know, we did hear tell of a creature here back in the locks a long time ago that somebody lovingly named Brandy. Do you think it's the same creature? I'm positive it is, ma'am. You know, the Loch Ness non monster, that was a, the Ness locks, Loch Ness. Right. Brandy, that, those are the Brandon locks, so Brandy would possibly be the name of this creature also. Is this going to be on TV? Yeah, sure. You know, I, I'm only grave digging until my country and western career takes off, so uh, I've seen things in this river that would eat my liver if my liver wasn't filled with booze. If brandy comes and gets me, I might be in trouble big time cause I think my life I might lose. Can you put this on TV? I sure will. Thank you so oh, much. Man. You know, Dick, I wonder if Grady's ever going to make it to Nashville. But more importantly, where did this creature come from, and how did she get here? That's a good question, Diz. We will answer that and more after this word from our loyal sponsors. Stay with us. We'll be right back.